because they're going to have to understand that if you want a different outcome at the end, you have to expect something different to happen in the meantime, which means your patients are going to look different. And so you have to keep an open mind. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. The second thing is the insurance companies aren't going to pay you for something that's this different at first until we show that it works. So here you've got a physician who not only is faced with, with uh, colleagues that are questioning what he's doing, but you've got his own training says that this is pretty risky. And now you've got an insurance company saying, that's not the standard of care. We're not going to cover that. So he's, Even if FDA have approved these devices? Even if the FDA, FDA approving it doesn't mean the insurance companies are going to pay for it. Wow. Yeah. So it's going to take a while. It's going to, but, but what happens at the end of the day is if the patients get better consistently and there's a better outcome than their colleagues that are doing the traditional standard of care, pretty soon those few people, those few leaders mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that try it and do it, start to, everybody starts to say, ah, that's accepted. And very quickly it goes from that's crazy to of course that works. Everybody knows that. You know, it, have, it shift, the changeover happens very fast. <laughs>
Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm someone who's been able to take advantage of the fact that the, that the people who made those decisions made the right decisions. Because I'm, I've been there now for, for six years at Pittsburgh, uh, and the real decisions had to be made 15, 20 years ago sure. when it was obvious that the steel industry was, was not going to be the sustaining economic mm -hmm. engine in, in the city of Pittsburgh. And they'd made a, a conscious decision, we're going to invest in biomedical research. And so there's some terrific leaders at the University of Pittsburgh and at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh Medical Center, UPMC. That combination, those teams, made some very, very good choices uh, about uh, how they need to recruit the right types of people, create an infrastructure that would allow for productivity. And one of the biggest things, one of, one of I think, the key elements of success in Pittsburgh is that there are so many people that are willing to help each other out work and not not feel like they need to be the the, hmm. the leader, star. the pillar, the star, right? Mm -hmm. there, and, and so what happens is there are plenty of stars and everybody uh, tends to give everybody else credit. I have never been in an environment where there's so much collaboration. And uh, That's I, a very interesting phenomenon. Yeah, it is. Because it's also like if I am here is because I'm one of the best ones and yeah. it's the, there's like a we're working for our name in general, no? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's very contagious too. You yeah. come there and even though you've got your own little area, you pretty soon realize there's all of these terrific ex er, uh, experts around you and you become interested in their problems, they become interested in your problems and together you do, you do better than you could do alone. It's, a, it's an outstanding environment and uh, it, the, the leaders of those institutions, uh, UPMC and, and University of Pittsburgh, uh, are the reason that we, uh, we are where we are. It's incredible. It's really an honor to, to, to chat with you, to, that you open us, our eyes to, to the possibilities that we can do many things that we never expect to do yeah. and that you're actually uh, doing them. So yeah. thank you very much for, yeah. for the time and for your work and for your yeah. research because it helps everybody. Oh, thank you very much for having no, me. I really gracias, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Señores y señores, esta es una plática con un médico, una persona que realmente ha roto fronteras en su ciencia, en su campo, que ha pensado la manera de, de hacer las cosas diferente y que por ende, pues ahorita muchísimas personas, más de dos millones, están, están logrando vivir una mejor calidad de vida gracias a apostar, a tomar riesgos, pero sobre todo pensar fuera de la caja. Es un placer estar aquí en Maine con Steven y gracias a ustedes por compartir la ciudad de las ideas. ¿Qué les pareció esta entrevista con Stephen Badilak? Nos deja muchas preguntas mucho más allá de sus propias investigaciones. ¿Cuál es la bioética? ¿Cuáles son los temas donde debemos de seguir incursionando? ¿Cuál es el papel de la ciencia? ¿Por qué seguir y bajo qué regulación seguir trabajando en lo que hacemos? A mi gusto, esta es una de las personas con más seriedad en las investigaciones que realiza y por supuesto al final de cuentas le ha generado un gran bienestar a la sociedad en su conjunto. Hay muchas preguntas y mucho que nos deja pensando Stephen Badilak. Ojalá hayan gozado ustedes esta entrevista como la gocé yo. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos aquí en Proyecto 40, donde otras voces se hacen escuchar. La Ciudad de las Ideas, un festival sin precedentes, agradece el apoyo a las siguientes empresas socialmente responsables.